At Hashtag, we were inspired by our friend Mad Chiller, aka Chad, who shared how an MCT oil infusion from spent rosin pucks helped treat his mother's skin cancer. This anecdote sparked our curiosity. What's really in this infusion? And how decarboxylated are the cannabinoids in those pressed rosin pucks? Our results showed the decarb percentage was sitting around 10% for the pucks we used, which were pressed at 170 Fahrenheit. For full COAs and a detailed breakdown of the experiment, check out our open source hash blog at hashtag.ca slash tech. All right, we are going to make an MCT oil rosin puck infusion today. Got our MCT oil, got our rosin pucks. Now these are of course spent pucks after the majority of the rosin has been pressed out. So the first thing we're going to do is fill this jar up as much as we can with rosin pucks. And we've got all different strains here. So this is going to be quite an interesting concoction. It'll be cool to see the cannabinoids once we actually send this stuff off for testing. So we're going to fill this jar up as much as we can here. And then we're going to actually end up taking everything out. But I'm just trying to see how much MCT oil we're going to need to pair this with. So we don't want to overstuff it because I'm going to be taking them all out after. And we're going to do an infusion in the ultrasonic cleaner. And this is, of course, Mad Chiller's recipe. Let's say that's about getting there. So we're actually going to use this ultrasonic cleaner and we're going to put all the rosin pucks in here and essentially sonicate them or hit them with sound waves to see how that impacts the extraction. We're going to do that first and then we're going to do a 30 day soak on them and we're going to send off samples of both. See if there's any differences. I'm going to try and get, submerge these as much as possible here and then we're going to run this. So it's been about one hour. The second 30 minute cycle just finished. And we noticed it got up to around 106 Fahrenheit was the highest temp we saw. That's after about one hour and not adding any heat ourselves. Just the heat from the uh, sonic, sonication. Yep, we're right around there, 106 right now. So we'll pour this back into the jar. We're going to take one sample right now. And then we're going to let it sit for 30 days and then take another sample. See if a long steep on it has any differences. The hash has all gotten much darker. That's without a doubt. Probably just from getting rehydrated in the oil. Yo, can you get me one of those small vials? And just grab a sample off this stream here. Or just pour some off. Only fill like 80%. A little more? Good. Zero day MCT infusion. Smells fucking amazing. All right, so it's been 200 days since we did the initial experiment. And today we're going to be taking out a sample to send off to High North Labs for further testing. What's up guys? It's been 200 days uh, since we conducted the initial experiment. And we've just gotten the results back from High North Labs. So I will share those. Well, those are shared on our blog um, with the full COAs for anybody that wants to take a look. Uh, big thanks to our um, lab partner, High North Labs, for doing the testing for us. The key takeaways uh, that I saw, so the ultrasonic steep, um, you can see here the concentration of total cannabinoids. It does drastically increase um, going to the 30-day steep. And then doing the 200 day steep from there, from 30 to 200, is a rather negligible increase. And if you take a deeper dive, you can actually see there's some decarboxylation going on. So if I was looking at these results, and if you're trying to replicate kind of what Mad Chiller does uh, with this topical application, it seems like a 30 day steep would be um, ideal for maximizing um, cannabinoid content without uh, wasting too much time or starting to see some degradation in the compounds. And I think what we're going to do next actually is decarboxylate uh, this material. So we still have the jar here from the experiment. So I think we're going to do a slow and slow heat on this, probably like in a slow cooker or something that's easily accessible like that. And then we will post those results as well. Uh, so those will come down here after the 200 day steep, um, which I think shall be interesting. And then with something like that, once it's fully decarbed, you'll have um, a product that can be used uh, that'll have, you know, therapeutic effect when taken orally because it's been decarboxylated and it'll be bioavailable 
um, when, when taken orally. This recipe as it is now, and this is what Matt Schiller calls the uh, his saltless RSO, um, which is really just an MCT infusion without any added heat and preserves the THCA content. Um, it, it's kind of what this recipe is for. So I, I would say this is more for, for topical uh, applications. But again, if, if you want to nerd out and look at the COAs, it is always interesting to see that some of the different cannabinoids that, that were found. And so we've got, uh, we've got all three posted here. Um, this is the day zero, the ultrasonic. We've got the 30 day steep and the 200 day steep. You can also, we also shared the ratio. We had about a four to one ratio of uh, MCT oil to rosin pucks. And there is a formula in here um, if you are using rosin pucks, you can um, use our formula to, assuming you have the same strength in your pucks, you can use this to, to get a basic estimate um, of, of potency if you were to recreate this experiment uh, using a similar oil to, to rosin puck ratio. So kind of, kind of interesting results. I'm uh, excited to see what you guys think in the comments. And um, as always, make sure you're subscribed to our mailing list uh, to see the latest for uh, hashtag experiments we have coming up and as well as when we post those decarb results which we'll probably just append to this uh, blog post which will be linked in the comments thanks and hope you guys have a great day